Hi everyone, my name is Guilherme Gomes Hatchinger. I'm a software engineer at Julia Computing and I'm a master's student at UFRGS. Today I'll be presenting visualization dashboards with Pluto, which will probably just give you a few insights on how to create a dashboard with Pluto. Um, just a quick introduction. Dashboarding is a way of gathering data inside of a page in a way that data is understandable and approachable by any any possible user. So a few, a few use cases would be just to pitch and validate ideas, uh, to monitor uh, systems that have real time critical time critical applications, and for generic data analysis, because it's a very easy, if, if done right, it's a very easy way for you to have get gather insights and understand properly your data sets. Currently use software. I, I just guess I would just narrow it down to three softwares, uh, Dash, R Shiny, and Power BI. The only one that actually is useful within Julia, usable within Julia is Dash.jl that bases itself on Plotly, so it only renders Plotly plots. Um, it has a set of function callbacks, which basically just let you have inputs, and whenever you change those inputs, you would just run a function and you can do whatever style you want. So that's awesome because you can do HTML on it. And so here I just have a really quick example where I have a plot as an output uh, and an input as a numeric value. And I basically just replot a sine curve every time I change a number. Uh, so if we take a look at this, this is basically just defining the precision to which the sine curve is plotted. So if I increase this, you'll see that it gets blocked here. But more importantly, you'll see that it gets blocked here uh, as I change this, so in real time. So why am I talking about Dash? I need to talk about Pluto. Yes, but Dash is the standard for dashboarding in my opinion. So I think that uh, presenting this first might give you a quick insights of why Pluto is such a good tool. Um, so yeah, exactly. Why Pluto? So Pluto, is a notebooking tool made for Julia that is reactive, can render a number of structures, and is also uh, also presents itself with bindable variables. So I'm just gonna explain every single thing that I just talked about. Pluto can render basically anything because it basically renders whatever it has show for HTML implemented. So it bases itself on multiple dispatch, which I think is one of the key features in Julia. So here we can see that it can render HTML using the hypertext literal HTML tag. This is awesome. Uh, it can render, just like the REPL, it can render matrices, but it can also render LaTeX, uh, LaTeX code using the matrix as an in, in, interpolatable variable. And it can also render images vector of images, vectors of vector of images, and so on. It's react, uh, it's reactive, which means that every time I change a variable, it cascades that effect to every time that variable is used. And that is something that is unique to Pluto simply because it bases itself on another notebook, notebooking tool, which is observable that has that as its key feature. Um, and it has bindable variables. So Pluto UI, which is another library, actually gives us a set of widgets that we can use and bind to variables. So here I'm just binding the variable word to the text field widget from Pluto UI. So every time I change this, you can see that it changes there as well. And not only that, it changes the plot down below, which uses this variable as well. And in all, all everything in real time. Here I basically replicate what we had from the start on the dash demo, but inside of Pluto. So if I slide this over, you can see that it gets more precise. It runs very fast and it's not using Plotly, it's using GR. Um, if we go further on this, you'll see that how to, Pluto is basically a dashboard itself. It's just a dashboard with a lot of code being displayed and it might eventually affect on how organized it is 
on how on or how easy it is for a user that doesn't code to find its way through it. So dashboarding on Pluto, I'd say it's just basically isolating the cell outputs and putting them on an HTML page without any code, but with all the interactivity. And to do so, it is better that we basically gather things up in cells uh, and render them simply because that will enable us to, to use flex directions and add multiple CSS combinations over multiple widgets. And so I will just recommend that you group most widgets within a single cell and this is how you do it. Um, if I have a slider here and a line plot, knowing that the line plot actually depends on the slider variable beta, um, we could do something like this, which is basically just render a, rendering HTML with the slider and the line plot being interpolated within it. But the problem with this is that when we change the slider number, this is going to trigger a reactive redisplay of, of the HTML, H, HTML tag. And this is going to make it unselect from our slider. And then we don't have a slider anymore. We just have a clickable thing. But we can work around, uh, work our way around this by using Pluto UI's experimental layout, which only updates the things that need to be updated. So by doing this, we can actually have this very um, responsive um, interactivity. And this is what I recommend. Let, going on about this, uh, to create a dashboard, we need the IDs for each one of the cells, which we can get from this function call right here, currently the running cell IDs, which is available in Pluto Runner. We can get the notebook ID, and the only thing that we need to do is getting the URL that you're currently in and adding query parameters, isolated cell ID equals, and then a cell ID. You can keep on appending that, and you will have a set of cells being displayed. So if I click on this, and I'm actually redirected to the URL that I was talking about, um, you'll be able to see that I'm just basically displaying the output of these cells, which are their own cell IDs. Um, if we go on a little bit more about this and we create our dashboard, a little bit more complex dashboard, we can go further on and create a huge dashboard where we have, um, we have scatter plots, we have filtering range sliders, and we have a way to create, uh, to make it so that the, the symbols are actually bigger. We can bind more stuff into these, <laughs> this plot right here and make it so that we can create a dash, a, a histogram based on the species and how many uh, flowers on that species I'm using the artist data set have that same paddle width of the of the item that I'm actually hover, currently hovering on top. So moving forward with this, I just create two separate cells and I gather their IDs by using this info tag right here, which I commented out because it's gonna be displayed on the dashboard. And here we go, we have two cells. They are running in par uh, and they, they interact with each other and we can gather that, that the, the results and we can get a dashboard. So by doing this, you can see that we have a page that does not have any code that runs reactively uh, in a very fast way. It's responsive, it's pretty, and it can give you insights if you do proper data visualization, which this is not, this is just a very simple visualization that I made. Um, just a quick final remarks. Pluto allows you to create interactive dashboards by being interactive itself. So you can change stuff and see a change in front of you. So it's a very cool experience. I do recommend using Pluto. Um, it relates on multiple dispatch, which is very sleek and very Julian for, for to create a multiple renderings and, and, and make it so that rendering structures is modular inside of Pluto. Pluto UI, gives you the ability of creating interactive plots by making it so that you have widgets that control variables, which is rather amazing. And they also have the experimental layout, which helps you um, create pretty, uh, pretty cell layouts.
and we have Pluto Slider Surfer, which nonetheless, it's, it's very important if you want to have this remotely hosted. So if you want to just have a link that you can share your friend, well, with your friends or your clients, and so they can play around with the dashboard, you need Pluto Slider Surfer. It's very easy to set up, and I do recommend you checking the look, taking a look at this. Thank you very much for your time, for your patience. Uh, please don't be afraid to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, my email is right there. I'm also on Slack and on Zulip. So yeah, thank you.